Uwambo, Angola's second largest city. It's a young city. More than half of its one and a half million inhabitants are under 15 years old. They need schools, universities, vocational training and jobs. But instead, the education system is in a dire state. It's the same story all over the city and the problems begin at primary school. We have 2,680 pupils. That's a lot. But we only have 15 classrooms. Lots of pupils have to learn outdoors, where they have the sun, dust and noisy traffic to contend with. This does not live up to educational standards. The crisis can be felt throughout the school system all the way up to university with high tuition fees, low quality and meager job prospects. There are currently 10,000 university students in Uwambo, and that number is on the rise. Many of them will get a degree. But what is that really worth? The quality of universities has not improved. That means that a lot of students have degrees that aren't really worth anything at all. They're just pieces of paper. That's a big problem here in Angola. Still, against all odds, there are some success stories in Wambo. Stories of young people who hedge their bets, like hairdresser and student Edna Dosh Santos. With the money that I earn here in my beauty salon, I can pay my tuition fees and make a living. Edna is 31 years old and always dreamt of being a successful businesswoman. And she's not satisfied with the one business either. She wants to open more salons and have lots of employees. Oh, and alongside her work, she also studies marketing and business at a private Catholic university. Tuition fees alone set me back 29,000 kwanzas a month. With study materials on top of that, we're talking 50,000 kwanzas a month. The materials and books are expensive and particularly hard to come by in Huambo province. 50,000 kwanzas, that's 140 euros invested in her studies every month. Like Edna, more than 7,000 students in Huambo go to private universities. There is so much hunger for education here. Despite all the difficulties, lots of young people go out and find work to finance their studies on the side. Milton Cardoso is also fighting for his future. He earns some of his money as a wedding photographer. He doesn't have a proper studio yet, so he set up a workspace in the corner of his living room. Photography is definitely my artistic calling. It's what I do in my spare time and at the weekend. My clients respect my work because I work with passion, and I have noticed that there is a market for what I do. He actually depends on two jobs. Milton Cardoso is also a philosophy teacher at a school that prepares young people for university. But it's a temporary position and far from stable. These days we need a plan B. I certainly don't want to be dependent only on my teacher's salary. Young people in Uwambo and indeed all over Angola cannot rely on the state to provide them with a stable future. Many of them have already figured this out. They are finding their own ways through a deeply flawed system.